thing. So again, we're looking at slide two in our Desmos where the equation is y equals x plus two. And we've been asked to come up with an xy pair that makes the equ equation work. I've put the number nine in for the y. And I'm seeing in the chat that some of you are telling me that means that my x has to be seven. If I change this to seven, is this a true equation? The thing that we have to remember though, is that this is the X and this is the Y. So making sure we're putting them in the right order. So let's go take a look at some people's work on this. I can't write on this, but let's take a look. Um, Aklam, you've got 10 comma seven. Is 10 plus two equal to seven? And are you able to change it if you, uh, she's telling me in the chat, nope, I made a mistake. Uh, Angeline, three for her X says three plus two is five. So three comma five works. Dan's eight and 10 works. Eight plus two is 10. Elaine's works. Ooh, Jeremy got a little bit clever there by using decimals, but they also work. Jawan Kenji have the same and they work. All right. Take a look at slide three. Can you see your ordered pair on the line? Okay, so I'm gonna go back and look. Aklam changed hers to five comma two. And I'm, I'm sorry, I wrote that wrong. Two comma five. Nope, that's not right either. I'm looking at the wrong screen, I think. Uh, five, seven, there we go. I'm gonna start here at the origin and go over five and up seven. Is that on this line? I also see Angeline's is three, five. Cole's is six, eight. Elaine had one and three. Jeremy had two and a half and four and a half. Quite a few people at three and five, and we've already got that graphed. So are we seeing our points on the line? The line doesn't have them drawn or, or, or the point on there, but can you see that it would be on the line? So if I was able to graph one of your points, you can say yes to this question. And the how do you know is that you can see where it would be on the line. So I think this next question is really interesting on slide four. What does solution mean? What does it mean for a point to be a solution to a linear equation? 
So for example, if I say two comma five is, is a solution to y equals two x plus three, how could you check my claim? Let's give people some time to answer that. I'm gonna pause now for a moment. Okay, I'm seeing seven people have answered this. If we could get a few more involved. Aiden, let me know if it's a tech issue again. Carly, I really need you to log into this Desmos. Asena, can you move forward to slide five? Men may her melody, let's not get lost behind. Let's stick with the group, okay? So here's what this looks like. We've got a blue line and a black line. Most people are saying, yes, they believe that there is a solution for this. Um, Aklam has said they cross at a point. Angelina said where they, when both lines cross, that's a solution. Jeremy is saying it's negative four comma one. Juwan said the two lines intercept and the xy pair of that interception is the solution of the linear equations. And it happens to be negative four, one. Kenji, I like your simplicity because they cross. We see that they cross, so we know that that is the solution. So this point right here, again, I'm now in the actual Desmos, so I can't write on it. But at negative four comma one, as we've had a couple of your classmates point out, this does have a solution right there. Next question says, if everybody could move to slide six. We're going to look at these two equations. Is there an ordered pair that is a solution to both of these equations? In other words, is there a number you can put in for x and the same, and a number that you can put in for y into both equations that works? Please use your scratch paper and see if you can play with these and see if you can figure this out. We're going to pause for just a minute. Give everyone time to process. When I graphed these two lines, I ended up at this intersection, which is two comma three. When I came up here and I guessed, I just happened to guess two, that's what somebody actually put in the description. Um, I think I saw Angeline who said I put in two and I tried it. Here's the equation where the X is, I put in two, and both of them ended up with a Y that was three. So that worked. And then there's the person who knew a little bit more than some of the others who said, I use substitution, which is one of my favorite ways to do this. You can tell that the guess and check method works sometimes if you're lucky enough to put in a number that works. Two is the only number you could put into these two equations and have it work for the X. So that was some luck there. Substitution is when we're plugging in one equation for the other. Both of these equations equal Y. So that means I can put these two equations equal to each other. and solve for the X. That's what substitution is called. I basically said, well, if Y is equal to X plus one and the other Y 
me erase this so we can see better. The other y is negative x plus five, then I can put this negative x plus five in for y, and I end up with it here equal to this x plus one here. And I'm just going to solve for them and see what happens. I'm going to add x to both sides. And I get 2x plus 1 equals 5. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. I'm running out of room. I'm getting 2x is equal to 4. Divide by 2, x equals 2. which we already knew from our other experiments here. But if I know that x is equal to two, I can go back to the original equations and pick the other one and say, well, y is equal to two plus one because I'm plugging in my x here. And that means we know that y is gonna be equal to the three. And we're back over here to our solution of two comma three. I know that was a long explanation and lots of different ways. You don't have to do all of them. You need to be able to do at least one. All right, so slide seven has a whole bunch of writing, but I want you to just think about this. I just showed you a whole bunch of different ways to solve for graphing, for, for finding the answer to this. This is saying, in fact, the ordered pair two comma three solves both of the equations, which we just showed and proved. When you have two or more linear equations, it's called a system of linear equations, or for short, they're called systems. The solution to a system of linear equations consists of the X and Y value that make both equations true. Um, and graphically, this appears as the point where the lines intersect right there. That's our solution. So here's the question I want you to think about. I'm just going to give you a minute. And I do see there's a couple of questions in chat we'll get to in a sec. If you're trying to decide whether a system of equations has a solution, would you rather have the equations or the graphs? Why? Which would be easier to look at the graphs or to work with the equations? I'll start that again. In the chat, it says, since lines are infinite, isn't a negative and positive line guaranteed to intersect? That's a really great question and one I want us to keep in mind as we keep moving forward. Uh, and Aklam, you replied, but I think you just sent it to me and not to everyone. Aklam said, yeah, but not if they're parallel. So I think thinking back to the, um, the polygraph we played a couple days ago, we could have a system of equations that's two lines that never cross because they're parallel, but do they have a solution then? So I really like Jeremy's question there. Thank you for bringing that up. All right, I'm gonna open you all to slide eight. These two lines represent a system of equations. What is the solution to that system? Again, in our chat, we had somebody say, uh, Jeremy said, if we have a positive line and a negative line, aren't they going to intersect at some point? And Aklam said, well, what about parallel lines? And you're seeing both of those in slides nine and 10.
So to capture this line, you're gonna enter one ordered pair for a point on the line. When I did this, I went for the simplest one, which is the Y intercept. So I put in zero comma two. There are other points on this line. You might've put in, I don't know, three comma three and a half maybe. And then if you click zap, it'll capture the line. This activity is called line zapper. Slide two is called line capture. We're gonna to try to capture both of these lines by entering ordered pairs for points on these lines. Try to capture both lines using no more than two zaps. And again, as uh, I answered to Asana, you're gonna probably want some scratch paper to help with your thinking on this. So I've been watching you all try this, and I know I, I can sense that there's some guessing and checking, trying to see if you can put a number in for x and make that 2x plus 7 equal a y, and then see if you can make that same thing work for the second equation. And I just want to show you, I know that this looks like a lot of work to use the equations, but it's really not that bad if you get used to it. If I'm saying that 2x plus 7 equals y, and 3x minus 3 also equals y, then those two things should equal each other. So I can rewrite this as 2x plus 7. Please write this on your paper with me wherever you've got some space. 2x plus 7 is equal to 3x minus 3. We're saying here that if y equals y, whatever my y is, what that number is, it's going to equal the other y because they're going to be the same. And then in that same way, the things that are equal to y are going to equal each other. So we're going to solve both of these equations together and we're gonna solve them for X. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this three. We wanna get like terms together. So I'm gonna get two X plus 10 is equal to three X. Because as I worked this, I did po positive three and negative three, that got eliminated. That's leaving me with, 2x plus 10 on the left side is equal to 3x. The other like terms I want to get together are those x terms. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And now this is eliminated. And I have 10 is equal to x. That means whatever this is right here, where these two are together, the X term is 10 and we don't know what the Y is yet. But we can go back up to either one of these equations and substitute this 10 in where an X is. So I'm gonna say Y is equal to two times 10 plus seven. I'm substituting this 10 for this X. Y then is equal to 20 plus seven because I did two times 10, which means Y is equal to 27. So I'm gonna unpause and see if you can enter in 10 comma 27 and get a line zap for both lines. Before we move on to the next slide, I just wanna show it doesn't matter which equation I chose. Once I use 
substitution and I say that 2x plus 7 is equal to 3x minus 3 and I found the x, I could have used the second equation and plugged my x in and still found the same y. And let me just prove it to you. y is then equal to 3 times 10 minus 3. 3 times 10 is 30. And 30 minus 3 is equal to 27. So both of them ended with y equals 27. And we use the combining of these two, making them equal to each other to find the x term. I'm going to let you take a look at screen three. And it is basically a student piece of paper showing the work I just showed. Sometimes it's helpful to look at the same thing in a slightly different way. And see if you can explain how he would be able to get the y value now that he knows that x is equal to 10. With me talking this through, but I've got a few of your classmates have also answered this. Um, he can find the y value, Ezra says, by putting 10 in place of x, then solving the equations from there. Um, Jeremy said you can plug 10 for x in either equation. Angeline said basically the same thing in a slightly different words. All right, let's go ahead and open up slide four. And honestly, it's where we're gonna end things today. Slide four has different lines. And I want you to look at the equations near them and see if you can capture all of the lines by entering ordered pairs for points on the lines with no more than three zaps. All of these are equal to y. So you should be able to set them up as um, opposites of each other, substituting in what the y's are equal to. So without doing um, much talking, I'm just going to work on solving this and this. So if anybody wants to quietly watch what I'm doing on the screen, you can, or you can do your own work.
Okay, I am aware of what time it is. So we are going to stop here today.